What up everybody? Welcome, my name is Travis Smith. I am going to be doing a haircut for you guys today. Um, I am part of Steps Hair Shop and Education. Uh, I wanna thank Adam Federico and Arnco for having me here today. Um, I am by myself, so I will be periodically kind of checking the comments, seeing if you guys have any questions, but if you guys saw my Instagram post, kind of what today's feeling is gonna be like, is gonna be kind of like a, like a Elvis kind of a Johnny Depp from Cry Baby kind of look, a longer graduated haircut. And you know, someone like myself, I've been cutting out for 15 years. I was an educator, currently I'm barbering right now. Um, is you do see a variety of men's hair, right? We've seen so much fading, so much fading, so much fading, and now you're actually starting to see some longer looks. And so we are gonna be kind of getting into that, what that looks like, and a couple key points for you uh, to go through the cut. So. First off, here's our gentleman, a lovely pivot point mannequin supplied by uh, Federico Advanced. And what we want to think about is we actually want to leave enough length that's going to be able to be kind of brushed and sculpted. And the thing is, that's a word I'll be using a lot with a men's haircut is really what you're doing is you're sculpting hair. It's not necessarily a direct, I cut it, we're done. It's a process, right? So what we're first going to do is we're gonna create what I would call a baseline into the haircut, right? So what we wanna do is we actually wanna start right behind the ear, and I actually prepped with some R Co. 1. So I'm gonna be kind of periodically using that through the cut, which is gonna really be great for whatever products we decide to use later on. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a section right behind the ear. We're just gonna kind of leave this area be for a little bit, right? And what we wanna do is before we even cut, if you really wanna think about how this hair is gonna fall, because with the men's haircut, the function of it is the most important part, right? Is to be able to feel like your client can style their hair easily. So what I want to think about is this length is going to have to travel to right around the occipital bone. This hair is going to have to flow into that. And then this length on top is going to be very long and that's going to have to get right into this area as well. So everything is kind of determined on this first section, right? So no pressure. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a subsection that's going to follow the shape of my, uh, my parting, which is from parietal to the crown. So I'm also gonna talk about tools today. And what I really like to use when I cut men's hair is something with a bit of a wider tooth and a fine tooth combination. I like to use the wider teeth on areas around the crown because this is really where the hair is gonna move the most. So I'm still gonna leave quite a bit of length through here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut short to long. And if you are one of those people that's in a salon and you're definitely nervous with men's hair, one of the things you have to do is you have to trust the process because no one's men's haircut looks good within the first five minutes, right? So we're just gonna keep bringing that down. And what you should do is you should have a graduated line that's gonna move from shorter to longer in the back. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side too, right? So we are going to get him situated, add a little bit of Iron Co. 1. I hope you guys can hear me okay. I'm using wireless headphones my wife got me for Christmas. So hopefully that might sound a little bit better. So if you're just joining me, my name is Travis Smith. What we're doing is a long graduated haircut. And so same idea is we're gonna divide right behind the ear, right? And what we wanna do is we wanna have something graduated that moves longer to the back. So those of us that are like, you know, maybe big Sassoon fans, I worked for them for a long time, almost kind of like thinking of like a firefly. So what we're gonna do is same thing. And we're going to just divide that so at first, it's just gonna be a little bit of disconnection. 
So those of you that start a haircut on one side and go all the way around, you don't get that opportunity at this. This you really have to kind of trust your mind's eye a little bit, feel the hair and you know, say a Hail Mary and hopefully you get it right. So I'm gonna take about an inch below the parting. Here, I'll move him back just a little bit. I think you guys can see okay. And same thing, so using the wide teeth, less tension, we're gonna bring it down, finger angle, it's gonna match there, lower elevation, and just let it brush down. I also wanna give a big shout out to Adam and Arinco. I think it's freaking amazing that we get to do live education like this, a whole variety of hair cutters, and really just not, you know, not just about the fluff, but really kind of getting into, you know, the technical side of what we do, however you cut hair or color hair or style hair. I think it's amazing. Okay, so same thing. We're just gonna continue that line, right? So just my body position should be standing right in front. I'm just gonna bring that down and same thing. Follow the guide to the middle. There's my middle point. There's my connection. All right? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a step back and I'm gonna check my balance visually and technically. It doesn't have to be perfect at first because this is gonna be a bit of a transformation. So depending on how you cut, there's a lot of options. If you're purely a scissor cutter, you can go in take this guide, graduate it through, right? If you are somebody that's more into clippers, which I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be doing some clipper over comb. So for me, I've been, um, I cut men's and women's hair for, God, almost 15 years. And then since the summer, I've been doing a ton of barbering. And that's just been kind of um, a bit of a different journey for me. And honestly, a really refreshing one. So I'm gonna be using clipper comb and I'm using a pair of wall magic clips and what I want to do is I actually want to open this halfway so it's just gonna give me a little bit of texture and what I want to do is I want to brush this hair up and graduate it right into the guide so I'm not looking for super tight but I really do want to leave a good amount of that length into there, right? So my body position staying the same, and I just follow that first initial guide. Nice fluid motion, and remember, you're not aiming for everything to be perfect right now. Um, the most clients I've cut in a day since being in a barber shop is 15, which is just insane. Um, so for me, you know, I have to be a lot faster than I used to with cutting hair, but that doesn't mean I have to be any less technical. It just means, even as soon as I should say backing up, you know, the first part of when we would teach men's hair cutting would be the fastest part, and then you would kind of continually refine it, refine it, refine it. And that's kind of the same thing. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over to the second side, not the middle, and we're gonna do the same thing. So going right below the initial guide, we're gonna lift it up, and consistent cut, we're gonna lift it up. And consistent cut, we're gonna lift it up. And consistent cut. And so my body position is staying the same way. A lot of times when you cut men's hair, you know, you always hear the term square, 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 square. And really I think the amount of how square the haircut is, is dependent on really like what the style is. So for this, we wanna be able to provoke the hair to move from front to back. Right, so just checking the guide through, moving through. Next section we're gonna do, I just wanna work down the middle. And when we're gonna actually, we should have about a point in the middle. And what we're gonna do is once we get there, is we're actually gonna sniff that little middle corner off. So working it through, working it through, working it through, working it through, up to where, right where we're done. 
So everything about a men's haircut to me is you're basically sculpting a theory now. So you're like, you go to a sculpting class, you know, you got a big block of clay, you know, within five minutes, you're not done, right? You got to, there's a process to it to get it to right where you need it to be. So we have everything moving towards the center. And as far as tools go, there's a lot of different clipper combs out there. Um, I do like the wall ones a lot. My company, which is called Steps Hair, along with my partner, Steven Adams, um, we love this company called Combank. So this is a Combank barber comb. And this is the one I absolutely really use a lot in the shop, one that I really love. Cool. So you can see silhouette wise, we're building up. We have the length right through here. And that's all we need for the time being. So now we're gonna switch back. And we're gonna go back to the scissor. And what we wanna do, since we've been building graduation, is we wanna continue that graduation. So we're gonna take vertical sections right behind the ear. We'll make sure you guys can see, okay? I know I said this the last time I did one of these, but man, like, you know, my first part of my career, I worked for Paul Mitchell, and we used to do these different trainings about your presentation skills, and you know, people would look at you and kind of critique you. But man, if you're an aspiring educator and you want to get better at presenting, there is nothing better than this camera, I will tell you that. Especially with, you know, how everything is now. Totally different world. So, what we're gonna do from here, is we're now gonna take these sections and we're gonna over direct them back, right? So you wanna use a good amount of over direction. You can see the guide. We're gonna be pushing that hair forward. So stationary guide. So you want, what we wanna do is we wanna create enough length that I'll be able to be brushed back. That's the key. So I know my inspiration was Johnny Depp from Cry Baby, which is one of my favorite movies ever. And just like anything in haircutting, you know, whatever you do, you don't want to be a one trick pony. You want to be aware of what's out there, what's current. I think there's always, just like there's always going to be, you know, long, uh, beautiful haircuts for women. For men, there's always going to be fades. But then at the same time, there's always going to be different things coming in. And you're, what you're seeing lately is you're definitely seeing longer looks coming back. Not like long, long, but you're definitely seeing um, a bit of a change with that. And you're seeing kind of like, I guess, you know, kind of what we're doing right now, longer graduated looks. So now I'm going to hold this section forward using this first guide and we're just going to take that front corner off and that's just going to help soften this area and I'll let you guys see that from the side profile as well so or from the front profile so same thing we're going to bring this forward and then brush that back, right? So you can kind of see, see it has a little bit of that wing in through here. Kind of almost think Polly from The Sopranos. So now what I'm gonna do is just section that right below the ear. It's a mannequin head, right? So you know that the sideburn area is not exactly, I mean, Pivot Point does an incredible job, but nothing's ever going to replace a real person. Although where we're at right now, we're getting close. <laughs> so with that, I'm just gonna brush that through, bring that down. And just kind of clean up around the ear. This part always feels like cheating to me when you cut a mannequin head, like when you see people do these like absolute immaculate, perfect mannequins. And they're like, you know you can't actually cut the ear, man. You can just go at it and go at it and go at it. <laughs> so just kind of cleaning up right around the ear. So 
So you should have weight from the front to the back and you should be good with that. So you kind of see it's automatically just a little bit easier to kind of move back. I don't want to spend too long on this because I'm just going to hit it with the trimmers in a little bit too. So you can see all that being brushed back. Hello, Jade, how are you? And if any of you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. So we're going to do the next side. And same idea is that we're going to take the sections from behind the ear and we're going to start bringing this hair back. So make sure you guys get a clear view. So watch, we have the guide from our previous cut graduation. And now we're just gonna over direct this hair back. So we, I do have a shop. I know I hate to like be the cheap guy that just plugs my shop, but I love my shop. And um, it's called stepshair.shop. And we, my partner Steven and I are just absolute nerds when it comes to our tools. So we have a wide variety of combs, cases. We try to kind of carry stuff, but not, you know, what you kind of see everywhere. And um, so right now I'm actually, this, I just got this pair last week. It's my first pair of seven inch scissors I've ever had. I already cut myself. <laughs> and we sell scissors from a brand called Card. These are actually cobalt steel from Japan. So they're a lot of fun to cut with. So same thing, just over directing this back, right behind the ear, right? So you have this extra length to the front. So what we're gonna do now, just like we did on the first side, we're gonna cut that sideburn. Right? See that hair brushed back. I'm gonna take it a step further. Just clean up this around the ear. All right? Just kind of tracing this around. Same thing here, just brushing that right out of the way. What I'm gonna do now is just over direct this to the front. I have a little bit of a corner, clean that up. And I have my hair being able to be brushed back. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm just gonna soften this front corner a little bit on this side. <laughs> Got a rave going on. All right, so feeling the hair. And just see if there's any little bit of a corner through there. And this is part for me that I really like about cutting men's hair is just the refinement process. Seeing something that might not be needed. can see okay so moving on so now we have our lengthen through there we have a little bit of weight coming through this part so now we're gonna work the top and the top we're actually gonna split into a few pieces so the first one we're gonna do is gonna be the back of the crown so if you take this section off you should have a little bit of a triangle Thank you guys again for having me, I appreciate it. If you just joined me, my name is Travis Smith. I'm out of Chicago, Illinois. I'm an educator, hair cutter, stylist. Currently I've been working in a barber shop, really focusing primarily on men's hair. 
So now with this, we're gonna go through the back and you don't wanna be afraid of making this a little bit heavier. So we're gonna take our sections and we're gonna take everything curved to the back, just like so, right? So we're gonna take sections moving towards the middle. My body position, if the camera wasn't here, I'd be standing right here. Your body position is so important when we cut hair. Obviously, it's gonna help with the longevity of our career. Importantly, it's gonna help keep your haircut consistent. So I'm gonna bring this down, bring it through. I'm actually gonna point cut this because I do want this area to be a little bit softer. Once again, as I kind of said earlier, Everything we do in a haircut, you know, I know it's kind of tired when we talk about form meets function in haircutting, but it's true. Like our clients, everybody, men, women, whatever, everybody, a haircut should be easy for them to style. It should be something easy. You can give them the right products, explain what they need to do. So men's haircut, especially like majority of men I cut, like they might spend three minutes tops on their hair. So for me, I want to make sure whatever I cut on someone, it's easy for them to style. Just like when I go out and teach, when hopefully the world opens back up, um, whatever I teach people, I want, you know, go to visit a salon, shop, whatever. I want the information to be easily um, transferred to them. I want people to be able to take it in and most importantly, use it. So bringing that same elevation nice and low. Yeah, everything moving towards the middle. I'm actually gonna show you, I'll change this view a little bit. Man, tripods have gotten so much better in the last few years, my God. Shout out to Pivot Point for that one. Although I'm still very stubborn, I'll still actually pick up the tripod and move it. Okay, so same thing, bringing this down. So everything should be getting longer to the middle. Yeah, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. And it's kind of funny too, because like when I started the haircut, I actually had everything kind of clipped up nice and neat for you, but really typically in a cut with salon, I rarely will use clips. Only maybe when I'm working with a really stubborn disconnection, maybe doing like a hard part in someone's hair. Okay, so same idea, bringing that nice and low. Wide teeth of the comb. This comb is my current favorite comb. It's from a Japanese company called Delrin. It's very similar to the old Bowie Pro combs, but it's a much more pleasant color than that blue one <laughs> that we all used forever. So same thing, bringing that nice and low. Point cut that guide in. And then what I'm gonna do is just take a step back and really kind of look at my work, see what kind of where I'm at. So I feel like my corner right through here is just a little bit heavier. And that's kind of something I always, you know, throughout a haircut is I'm always just kind of visually kind of checking it, checking the balance, use the mirror. And if you're home, you know, unfortunately if you're in California or lockdown, maybe you feel like you have that haircutting itch. I mean, do a haircut, film it, put it on selfie mode. You will absolutely see every little bit of truth in your haircut. <laughs> All right, cool. So we got the back done. Now we're gonna move to the top. Let's see if we have any questions. Hey, what's up, Alice? Welcome from London. Brad's watching. What's up, Brad? So if you guys have any questions, let me know. It's a pretty self-explanatory haircut. The main focus is you're keeping a lot of length. And I think one of the hardest things too, about like, especially when we cut men's hair, is a lot of guys have no freaking clue what they actually want. They have no clue on how to explain it. So you really have to be able to ask the right questions because you can't just always outright just be like, oh, do you like this disconnected? You know what I mean? 
I mean, pictures are great. Talking about how they style the hair. Sometimes you just straight up have to make an executive decision, right? And really just figure out how this is all gonna kind of tie in, how it's gonna work. So really for us, everything's gonna be making its way to this point, right? So the top, we wanna keep all this length through here. As far as like the vibe of this cut, I mean, if you're just joining me, like this is obviously very inspired by like, you know, uh, Johnny Depp from the John Waters movie Cry Baby, one of my favorite movies ever. And obviously that's ripped from Elvis. And if you look at those old pictures of Elvis, you know, minus the military ones, you know, the guy had a lot of hair. And we think back to the 50s and 60s, there was a lot of hair on the sides that people would slick back. So you need to know your product and you need to be able to put in a good cut that's actually going to be able to work that way into the shape. So now what we're going to do is, we're, and this is very important, is we're going to take a section from the parietal ridge and we're going almost kind of like you're doing a fringe. And we're going to do that from the center back so it should make a triangle. Okay. So you should have kind of like this long bang in through here. And then you have this area through the sides, okay? So you have, once again, just to kind of sum this up, we started from here, the parietal ridge, curved all the way, you know, not to like, I'd say like, like crown, right? To about here. Our first section we cut was a weight line that moved to the back. We clippered that up. We took a section from the ear graduating this heavy and with that section we over direct that hair back which is going to give it that hook we socked in the corner by pushing it forward so that's going to slip back and then what we did on top in the back area is we brought all this down right and now what we did through here is we divided this hair on top right to the parietal area and we're going to leave this length really long so your next step you're going to do is you're gonna section this again. So the hair behind the ear goes forward and the hair in the back goes there. So I'm gonna switch scissors. I know this is like blasphemous consider my past and I'm actually gonna use sliding scissors for this part. I've never used a pair of sliding scissors until this year. For about nine years, I'd even use thinning scissors. And for me, uh, with no restrictions on what I do, uh, I like all tools. I think everything kind of has its place. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take sections and we're gonna bring this through here. And I'm just gonna lightly slide through because I want that weight line to be softer. So through these areas, I'm gonna bring this down, bring it through the corner. and just leave my ends really nice and soft and textured. So we're just gonna bring that all the way over. All right, wide teeth, and I can remember, because I don't want a lot of tension through here. I wanna leave length so that it will move. These scissors take out a ton of weight. So I want this line to not be precise. I want where I'm pulling it to be precise, but I want the line to lay soft. So I'm gonna comb, comb all this hair over. I'm good with even the little bits kind of hanging over it. Because so once again, I want movement. I want the hair to be able to feel like when this guy sculpts his hair, that it's gonna fall into place. I grew up in, um, in Orange County, California. And um, high school, I went to barber shops all the time. And there's so many times that like you would ask for certain things that end up always getting a high and tight. Could be because we live near a military base, could be that. But a lot of times it's because, you know, I probably didn't convey exactly what I wanted. And at the same time, the barber probably wasn't exactly listening to what I wanted either. So I always kind of remember that. So. When I think about a look, I want to think about how it's going to function the hair. I'm always kind of think, saying that back and forth. Like, how is the haircut going to function? Right? Nobody wants to spend a ton of time on their hair, or not on the haircut, but on their, uh, on the styling. Well, some dudes do, but most don't. 
Okay, so bringing that down, light tension. Right, soft, why did it not fall into place? So I'm still using the principles of graduation. You want all that hair to fall in the same place. You want to be able to throw your comb with expertise. <laughs> it's funny, I like always get a lot of crap where I work. I work right up the street at this cool barbershop called Catrone and they're like, you have so many combs. And I'm like, well, I mean, I sell them, but at the same time, like I just, I drop them, I love them. I've always been an equipment dork. It brings me joy, right? So bringing that down, same thing, wide teeth. Bringing that down. Sliding the scissors, lowering them as I move through. So brushing this hair over now. So, Someone's wondering, would this work for a parted haircut? I mean, yes and no. The whole thing is you're cutting this hair so it'll be slicked back. The front, I feel like could kind of drop. It could be messy. It could be quaffed up really nice and clean. It depends on how you really want to style it. So now bringing that center point in, you should have a little bit of a triangle. And I'm just going to point into that to make it soft. Right? So just by combing that hair, I can automatically see this is gonna be slicked back and it's gonna work. And that's really what I want. So now we're gonna to move to the top. All right, so we had a section from right where we left off. And we're gonna leave that through. So when you do that, you should have a triangle that makes sense, right? So everything right here is gonna move from there, kind of like a fringe. I'll show you from the front perspective too, so you guys can kind of see. Okay. Just like that, yeah? Cool. I'll just check my comments. Great idea with the scissors, instead of cutting it blunt and then chipping and thinning the softness, yeah, I mean, you absolutely could cut it blunt and there's nothing wrong with that at all. I just find for me, like, I like a little bit of that softness from the get-go. I do this with a razor. I use it with a straight razor, a plie air. I use it with a feather, you know, whatever you see fit. So now, where to go to the top? I'm gonna go back to one of my favorite products ever, r Co. One. I do not work for r Co. I am merely a guest. So I am saying that, uh, not because I'm paid to, but because I do love this product. Okay. So now we have this link that fell over here, all right? So we have the stuff behind the ear. So I'll make sure that was all the way cut. I think there's one little bit left, all right? Now we have this hair see if I could turn him so you can see. So now we have the hair over the ears. And this is gonna look really, really funny, almost like I'm trying to give him like a, uh, I know you're not supposed to use the K word, but the uh, K-A-R-E-N kind of look. So what you wanna do is bring this down, find that short point right there, if you can see it. Right? I have some background music playing right now. So playing a little bit of the specials, one of my all time favorite bands. So hopefully you guys don't mind the background music. I hate watching haircut demos live and it's just complete silence. It drives me insane. I'm not good with silence, period. As many of us uh, hairdressing folk have our ADHD, I do as well. All right, so bringing this down, bringing it low. So, from the side profile, let's see how we are. You guys can kind of check that out. 
right? See how everything is brushed back. You can see that weight is going to sit right there, and that's exactly what we want. Dude, I love this one product so much. It is all over the floor, so if I fall, we're going to have an amazing blooper reel from this cut. All right, so if anyone uh, likes what I'm doing and you are looking for education for the next year, um, I do do live education. Um, I am available if you go to our website called stepshair.shop. You can also check out what goodies we have. Um, and you can email me from there or you can email my partner, Steven Adams. Um, I have a couple classes coming up in Illinois. Um, I am out of Chicago, so I am not hopping on a plane right now, I'll tell you that much. But hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully sometime this year, when everything kind of chills out a little bit, I will definitely be back teaching, which is absolutely my, um, my passion and my favorite thing to do in this industry. Okay. All right. So now we have this side, as you guys can see. And we're gonna do the same thing. So we're just gonna take a subsection. You might not even need it, actually. And we're gonna bring this hair down using that shortest length from the back. So we wanna leave some length to the front for sure. All right? So this should not be connected in to anything below it, okay, right? So now, take this length, hold it lower, we're gonna check the balance, so my left side is just a little bit longer, not by much. That's another thing hairdressers out there is something's not even, do not have a meltdown about it. It's very rare that I've ever watched anybody. I've seen, I work with some of the greatest hair cutters I've ever seen. And um, it's very rare that they ever go through a haircut the first go around and it is immaculate. There is always room for refinement. Okay. So now, kind of see where we're getting at. So you still have that corner up here, which is really what you need. So typically when you cut hair, men's hair, you know, you talk about a corner and really the most important ones we talk about that is the parietal ridge. So you have corner, 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 right? And then kind of the odd one always is really the mastoid area. And it's always kind of funny because, you know, people always are like, this needs to be squared and all that. I'm like, eh, I mean, like maybe, not necessarily really. Most of the time, I feel like these corners end up going away anyway. So just think about like, as far as head shape goes, how it's gonna fit around, because not every haircut is ever gonna be the same. Not every haircut is the same sectioning pattern. You know, you gotta mix it up. Cool. Sisters, not twins. <laughs> <laughs> no. So now you have this length on top, super long. Now it's gonna be brushed back. So you guys can kinda get this vibe I'm going for, right? Okay. So now, with this hair in the back, white teeth. Just make sure that's gonna be blending in. So now I'm combing all that hair from the top, right? Oh, let's see, you guys can see that a little bit better. So all this length from the top, comb that straight back. There's your guide from earlier. Blend that in. Yeah. So 
you know, with a haircut like this, like what's the emphasis? Any haircut you do, whether it's like the longest layered cut where you're doing nothing or a bob or whatever, there's always an emphasis. There's always something that stands out. What is it about the cut? For this, it's definitely the top. It's the length. It's a haircut that could be worn down, messy. It could be a haircut that's coiffed back. That's the emphasis, right? It's having all that length. So always remember that. It's like a great key point too is when you cut hair is really what what's the emphasis? Like if you were not trying to sell a client because nobody loves that, but if you were trying to get a client hyped on something you're doing, you know, what's in it for them? See, there's the R and Co one slip. <laughs> I'm actually gonna get a towel because I could already see this going bad. Okay, so same thing on this side. So we're gonna bring this hair back. And then anything that will reach in that corner, cut through there. And we'll do the same thing over here because I already cut that side. Right, so bringing all of this back. And we cut with the notching scissors, the slides. So any of you guys watching, any you guys do watch this, you could find me at Travis W. Smith on Instagram. You could find our shop and our page at Steps Hair. Our website is stepshair.shop. Anyone that's watching, you're welcome to get a 20% off discount. All you got to do is message me on Instagram. Say you watch this haircut. You can tell me if you loved it. Tell me if you hate it. But I'll still give you a discount either way. Cool. So now you kind of see everything is brushing back. Feeling good about it. So one last thing before it's dry. Going back to the regular scissors, we're actually going to cut the top. So the top, we're gonna take a section down the middle. And really this is just refining at this point. Cause there shouldn't be a lot of length cut off. So a key point, when you do this, you cut any of this, that starts going away, let it go. So you should not be up here and back. It's not a round layer. You should be straight up, yeah? So lifting it straight up. Lifting it straight up. Simple connection. Yep. So I'm going to over direct the first section to the middle. And then my next sections will all go to that previous guide. That's how I always would teach people. If you want to keep the top square, meaning if you were to hold it here, it goes across this way. Typically, if you bring everything to the middle, it's going to end up doing this. If you bring usually the first section, or excuse me, section two into one, and then everything else into that second one, that's usually how you'll keep that corner in through there. So subsection that out. And now we're gonna bring the remainder up to here. You know, at this point, you're keeping that length. Also at this point, if the client starts telling you that the bangs are too long, uh, it's where you fire the client because they completely just wasted your time because this would not be the haircut for them. <laughs> I feel like the long bangs thing has definitely come back in. Not like, not like how it was years ago, like when Boardwalk Empire came in, but like this is weird, like almost kind of 90s look. We're not quite at the middle part, thank God. There's no Dwight shoots at the moment. But I'm definitely seeing kind of like just dudes wearing their hair kind of messy and down, which is kind of funny. Yep. So there we go. So now we got everything combed back, feeling decent about it. Okay, now we're going to put some product in. We'll do our final part of refining. So men's hair, so when we think about it, like it's, 
you know, it depends on like how much effort the guy's willing to put in his hair. I think for me personally, like I've, you know, I've worn my hair like this for years. It's never been as simple. Like I just put some water in, comb it and sculpt it. Like my hair is super wavy. Um, so in order to kind of get that kind of clean combed look, I need something like a spray gel. I typically really like this. So it's called a jackpot. It's a styling cream from R Co. So I like to put this in my hair a little bit wet. I'm gonna use about that much. And this is just gonna take a little bit of experimenting on your part too. So wanna really get that in from roots to ends. Okay. And make sure that you absolutely brush that through. Because what you need is you need a little bit of memory to get that volume, especially if you want height in the front. Okay. And you definitely are going to want it in the sides. But I'm also doing a demo and dry cutting. So the last thing I want is to get this to get too gunky and not be able to comb through it either. So it is a fine balance. All right, so if you are into this kind of styling, into this kind of thing, tools are important, right? So you need a good comb, you need a good clipper comb, clippers, you know, obviously you wanna get something great for that. As far as when you style men's hair, my recommendation is you need a couple different options. So I love a vent brush. This is not one we sell, this is a Demon one, it's great. I love the vest brush. So this one is from Federico. We also have a nine row one that we sell in our shop. This is gonna give you a little bit more tension and height. And then this one is actually what I've never used before this year. And I love this. So it's a mini round brush. This is amazing for guys with short hair, calyx, all that, especially if you wanna get a little height. So I love all these different tools and I use them constantly throughout the day. So first I'm gonna use The vet brush, so I really want to work from side to side, really making sure I give the emphasis on height on the top and that the sides are brushed back into place. So you gotta yank that stuff forward, that's what's up. Bring it through, brush it through the sides, comb down the, uh, the crown a little bit, and then as you start taking subsections, and start getting that height. This is not, you know, when you're in a shop or in a salon, this is not something you want to be spending, you know, 20 minutes doing, right? It should be quick. So you always want to be brushing the hair towards the middle and back. Remember, the haircut is not done until the client leaves. So as you're blow drying this haircut, it should take you no more than three minutes. You should be looking at how the hair is falling and start really thinking to yourself, okay, what might need to be adjusted? What might need to be textured? Because at the end of the day, it should be easy for this guy to wake up, put some product in, brush it, blow dry it, whatever, because you put that extra effort into the cup. Also, the right product is super important too. You know, there's so many times I'll be cutting a guy's hair and be like, oh, I got this gel my wife got me. I'm like, bud, that's not gonna work, man. You're gonna look like Patrick Bateman from American Psycho, you know? You're gonna need, you know, something like a, a control paste, you know? You're gonna need something like a comedy stick. You're gonna need something that put a little bit more oomph in it. Also, educating guys as far as how we style the hair, about the fact that when they put product in, they should probably dry it a little bit, blows their mind. <laughs> so same thing, just brushing it through. 
really watching how everything's falling into place. Start brainstorming. Hopefully you're not getting a oh crap moment, like I can't believe it turned out this bad. <laughs> Even if you get that, there's still room for refinement. <laughs> Once again, you kind of use the first couple of rows of the brush to lock it in. And then you want to brush it forward, getting a little bit of that height. But, you know, I always grew up loving kind of brush looks like this. Um, and I grew up really being into like the Smiths. Joy Division, Depeche Mode, like there's this great punk hardcore band from San Diego called like, Broken, or from the, the mid-90s, and they had these like really cool kind of brush crop looks like this. So throughout high school, you know, I'm kind of flip-flop, and always try to figure out how to like, get this kind of style. And what we would do is we'd actually go to the grocery store and we'd get Murray's Hair Grease, which if you don't know what Murray's Hair Grease is, Next time you're in the grocery store of the beauty supply, go to the ethnic area, and the can is an orange can, and it has an African-American couple on the front with afros, and what it was used for is a super intense can of pomade. And what it was used for is you would actually heat the can on the stove, and it would really uh, soften what was in it, and then it would be used as a jerry curl. But all of us would be trying to slip her hair, spike her hair, or whatever else. Alright. So now we're going to finish this up. How are we doing on time? We're about to wrap this up. Okay. So, final part. We just want to start seeing how everything has fallen into place in the back. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is just take my blending scissors. And just start kind of really looking at the shape. Making sure everything can kind of fall right into place. Now, when I'm not having to explain this to a live audience over Facebook, this will typically take me about 30 minutes to do in the shop. So really what I, th I think about is like when I cut men's hair is just kind of like think about the steps, right? So it's typically you're gonna work, you know, sides, back, top, blow dry, refine, edges, done. So even kind of getting through the bottom area through here, just gonna soften that, take a little bit of the length up. So just kind of watching how the hair is falling, you know? Like you really want to see that be able to be brushed back. See that silhouette. Hopefully you like what you see. And then same thing through here. So just kind of watching my corners, making sure everything kind of flows up to the top. Softening this area a little bit. And you kind of want that top length, especially to be I don't want to say fringier, but softer is not a bad thing at all. And 
just brushing that through, softening that area a little bit. Taking that weight out. Checking my front balance. So you definitely want to leave more of that length towards the top, but if you want to go in and you know, take clipper over a comb or a guard or whatever and soften the edges around the ear, like go for it. You know, make the haircut your own. You don't have to copy it the way I did it or the way anybody else does a shape like this. Okay, so now my last part before I just use my edgers is I'm just gonna go through the top. Okay. I just wanna make sure that not too heavy of a corner right through this area. You should not be connecting your disconnection. And once again, guys, there's so many different ways to cut hair. Um, you know, I, I the last like, you know, eight years I worked for Vidal Sassoon. You know, I didn't go anywhere near texturizing scissors. Everything I did was trying to make things as clean and immaculate as possible. And it's an amazing skill set. And there's absolutely incredible hairdressers there to this day. Um, you know, it depends on what kind of hair you like to do, what gets you excited, what gets you stoked. You know, for me, men's haircutting has always been a passion of mine. And I think there's so many different approaches to it. And that's kind of the fun of it. There's never just one way of cutting hair. So just lifting that up, softening a little bit of that corner at the crown. softening that baseline at the bottom. Hope you guys are digging it. Thank you guys for hanging out. I absolutely appreciate it. You know, if you want to see more of this stuff, holler at Arinko, hit up Adam Federico, say you enjoyed this. You know, if you want to DM me and tell me it's the worst demo you've ever seen, that's cool too. <laughs> left. I'm just going to clean up this hairline. Just making sure everything kind of promotes the idea that the hair is moving back to the center. Sad, you can't move the ear out of the way on these things. <laughs> and I have words you see the other side. Just get some product in to style them up. Last bit, just checking my sideburns, making sure they're even Steven. A 
look at product wise, we're going to use some control from R Co. I personally like this look a little bit messier. So really kind of work that the roots to ends. Really working that through. Let's see here. Where did I put the brush? So just brushing it through. And then if you want height, Then a little bit of vicious stronghold hairspray. There you guys go. So disconnect the top. Honestly, sometimes it looks even better, a little bit messy. But yeah, there you go. So thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm at Travis W. Smith on Instagram, stepshair.shop. If you want 20% off, just DM me on Instagram. Check us out. Also, thank you to Art Co. for supporting education um, and giving all of us a chance to get out here and just be technical and just love what we do. So thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Peace.